Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm James, and since 2008, I've been involved in the delivery of weld inspection training. In this series, I want to share with you the route to your weld inspection course and how you can get the most out of it. Remember to like and subscribe for more content and to hit that notification bell to stay up to date when I release our future videos. So there's a quick disclaimer before we start. The way I'm going to run through this is the way I teach the course. I don't always teach it in the same order and it's often ch changed as I have uh, different students asking different questions, but the content will remain constant over the week. And of course, this is my video, it's full of my opinions and it's not uh, endorsed by CISM or TWI Limited. So what do we have to do on the course? Well, we have an awful lot of content. It's a four days cram, if you haven't already sort of started learning, to cover the welding processes, how they work, why we use them, their benefits, how we then test the materials for NDT and mechanical testing, the documentation that goes along with that, and then how in production we maintain mechanical properties and weld quality levels to meet the desired outcome. And then that ties in all the, the subsidiary information about weld consumables and calibration and weld and safety. So there's an awful lot to get through. So my first bit of advice here is do not wait until Monday morning of your course to start revising. Take in information from all over the place, as many different resources as you can before you get there, because it's an awful lot to do in the week. So day one, what do I do? Well, I start with an introduction. I take you over how the course will work, how it's structured, you know, break times, you know, all that type of thing about emergency exits. Get introduced to the, the, the students, find out what their background is, and start to work out in my own head where I may have to teach a little bit more or I can get away with just skimming over some things in order to create a, some learning, learning space. Duties of a weld inspector, yeah, this is what is in uh, the course content? What do you need to do as part of your work scope? And of course, the uh, TWI scheme document, which I'll leave a link to below, will take you through exactly what the, the roles at different weld inspection levels are. We then go into welder joint design. So let's get the basics done and understand how welded joints are produced. You know, bevel angle, included angle, root gap, root face, what their effects are and how we would measure them. Then a very quick review of welding defects. So we use a PowerPoint presentation to show what certain defects look like before I then normally cover manual metal arc. All of your training samples within the course will be manual metal arc welds or plastic casts of these welds. And by just getting that review in early, anybody who has never touched MMA or has done only a little bit will be able to be in a good position with the weld and defect section to be able to move on to our first plate inspection. This is a plate, it's about 300 millimeters long. We inspect the face and the root, make a report and answer 20 multiple choice questions on it. We'll then go through the answers, talk about the, 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 the practical session in a bit of detail. And my idea here is to make sure that you are starting to at least see defects, even if we're not calling them the right things at this point. Then we move on to day two. 
and we would have set our homework at the end of day one. So we'll go through our homework questions between 30 to 50 questions here. And this is really getting you used to the, uh, the way in which the general and technology multiple choice part of our exams is going to work. We finish off welding processes. So here we, t we cover the main processes of TIG, MIGMAG and flux coarc welding. We start with the weldabilities of steel, introducing how carbon content affects the controls we need in welding, like preheat and post-weld heat treatment, in order to maintain our mechanical properties. Welding consumables comes in next, explaining how standards like uh, BSE and ISO 2560 work and how we identify welding consumables for their mechanical properties, their flux covering, their impact strength, etc. And then we move on to our second plate. So using what we learned on day one to drive forward and really now pin down exactly what defects look like. So I start to get a little bit more uh, prescriptive about this is what you need to be calling a defect term and get those correct so that we can find them in our acceptance criteria. Then I normally end the day with a screen test. These screen tests are fair to multiple choice questions where you only get uh, about 15 seconds to answer each question. And that will give us time to do the test as well as review the answers before we then set the homeworks for the next day. So day three, Again, start of the morning, we come in, talk about the homeworks from the previous night, go through everyone in detail so you know, even if you haven't got it right, why. Maybe review the TIG, MIG and MAG flux core processes again, but now we're just pushing the process characteristics, being a drooping or constant current curve or our flat and constant voltage curve because we know there's a lot relies on those process to get that to get that running we'll go over mechanical testing so why we have different mechanical tests and which mechanical properties they're covering non-destructive testing as well we'll cover the main four so this will be penetrant MPI, so magnetic, UT and RT. Um, not a huge amount of detail, but as a visual weld inspector, you need to know these exist and the very basics of what make them work. Then we'll move on to our next practical session, which is a, a pipe. So very, you know, exactly the same really as the plate. It's just now it's curved. It's a little bit harder to see into the root. But we use, again, that, that information we've taken from day one and day two practicals to, to make it a little bit more difficult. And then we'll do another screen test, another set of 30 questions. Day four. Yeah. There's a pattern here, isn't there? Review our homework. Review some macro sections. So these are cross sections of the welds where we're looking to identify welding defects. Do welding procedures and welder qualifications. So I like to take you through a general flow of a welding procedure and welder qualification task list. How we move from PWPSs to mechanical testing and uh, making a full package. I don't really tie this down to a specific standard because there are so many, but they all have the same sort of flow. Then we'll finish off with our last practical session of the week, which is our second pipe. And again, go through the answers and get that running right. And finish off, hopefully with two screen tests, if, if I can fit it in. And 
And then you move to Friday. Now this is our exam day. So how does the exam work? Well, you will have a 30 question multiple choice. So this is a general paper. It could cover anything, but they tend to be fairly straightforward questions, fairly straightforward answers. And you get 45 minutes for that. Then you have a 60 question multiple choice, which covers our technical questions, which are more in depth. You'll have two macro examinations to review, 20 multiple choice questions for those two. So 10 each. 20 questions for a plate inspection. And we get an hour and 15 minutes for that. And an hour and three quarters to do a pipe. It's a bit bigger, you know, harder to see in and move it through. So that's our five sections of our, of our exam. And that requires 70% pass mark for each section. If you don't get 70% in one section, you would be asked to come back and retest for the section that you failed. If you fail that, then unfortunately you will be a re-course again. But I have never really seen that many people have to do that. So that's a very quick review of what the Weld Inspection 3.1 CSWIP looks like in 2022. It's relatively straightforward as a course and exam structure, but heavily relies on you doing a decent amount of work before you come to the course. And remember, you can see a lot of that information that the way I would like to teach it within our channel. So I hope that was useful. Good luck in your studies. Remember to check out our channel for the information you need.